Hi everybody, welcome back to Ox Talks. It is July 23rd, 2024. Sitting here in the uh, San Marco Plaza, that's what they call it. Uh, San Marco de Piazza. Watching, it's a little a snack area. You have drinks, a little afternoon uh, aperitif and a snack. It's not really a full restaurant. Uh, they always have at these places, these, these uh, little orchestras or bands playing. So I'm gonna just do a walk around, share some thoughts about the trip so far with you guys, give you my, my thoughts, my insights, um, and you guys will get a flavor on the walk around. So hopefully with this new little contraption I've got, it'll, it'll stay in focus and you guys can hear me. I've got my mic on, so hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll hold in there. But I'm gonna do a little walk around now. All right, see you guys later. So we're just doing a little walk around trip and see what we see. I will tell you this, um, there are a lot of people right now uh, here. I don't know if it's because they have dropped off some, some, some cruise ships or some tour buses. I don't know, there wouldn't be buses here on the island, and I guess I should say other boats. So you can see the amount of people. Obviously, this is one of the central places here in the Piazza Square. What you're looking at right in front of me is the, uh, the Doge Palace, uh, which we toured the other day. I think I showed you guys, but that's the Doge Palace right there. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. And the next to that is the Basilica of San Marco, San Marco Basilica. You can see they're doing some construction on some of this stuff, guys. So. Uh, you know, I just wanted to share kind of the view with you. Let's see. And then just next to the piazza here is basically Water's Edge. So let me walk you out here where they service some of the gondolas and you can get a flavor. But like I said, tons of people here uh, in the square today. It's warm, but I will say when we got here five, six days ago, it was warmer. It was like low 90s. I think today's probably mid 80s. When you're actually out in the sun, it, it feels obviously a little bit warmer. But uh, this is the just on the outer edge of the square. You can see where they pick up the gondolas. We did do a really nice gondola ride the other day, and we actually picked the perfect time because we did it around... Um, Around just before, just before dusk, uh, we did the gondola tour, which was awesome because we didn't have direct sunlight. Uh, we were able to not be standing in a line. We got it right from the hotel, which was even a little more special because we loaded right there, so it was really ideal. Uh, we did a, a that's Judeca Island over there, I believe. You guys can research it. We walked across what's called the pontoon bridge the other day, just following the uh, the celebration they did a couple days ago that I posted something about El Rendatore or Rendatore. And then they take that bridge down. They only set it up for a few days during the festival. So we were lucky enough to be able to be here during that time and cross over the, the bridge, the pontoon bridge. That is the other side of the Doge Palace and Water's Edge right there. Now, if you continue down that walkway, it goes all the way down. They have a lot of catamarans and the public transportation boats pull up there at the Water's Edge. So let's continue to kind of, I'll make my way back into the square here and continue that's the cafe we we're just sitting at. You can see the amount of people here is, uh, that's it's a lot of people. But, you know, I guess it's season here. I mean, I don't really know what season is, but I will tell you this. Obviously, kids are off of school. Uh, people are taking vacation time. I did see a massive pickup this morning in the number of people walking in this square, maybe about an hour and a half, two hours ago before we started uh, we went to checked out today did a tour of the opera house the venice opera house pretty spectacular i'm not normally one for tours but i did enjoy that it wasn't too too crazy 
and that was pretty impressive. I'll post a couple of just pictures or maybe a, a short. I think I took a short sitting in the main amphitheater to give you guys a flavor for what it looks like inside. Extremely ornate, a lot going on there. So now we're making our way back in uh, to the Piazza Square. That is the Basilica there to my right on the far right. I think it's still your right. Might be your far left, guys. Um, that is the, again, Doge Palace here on this side. We're doing some work on the Basilica. But you get a flavor for the amount of people. Everyone kind of just hangs around. When they find shade, they just kind of plop down wherever they are and hang out. And you guys know if you've followed this channel since its inception, I am not a big fan of crowds. So this has been taken getting some used to for me, obviously, to be able to experience this. You just got to be able to make some sacrifices, put up with things. It's hard to actually fully guard your watch your six in this surrounding but you know what i'm talking about it's just a different feel i'm not used to obviously walking around um without my uh my security but it's just a fact right now that having to live with that now in the evening guys um in the evening if you look down here the other night we were here and the whole center of this square was was standing in about I would say three, maybe two inches of water at night. The square, I don't, I'm not saying every night, but at least the night we were here a few nights ago, if you see that kind of that, that little area there, it floods. Uh, the canals, the water in the canals raises, I guess. The tide comes in, and huh, this whole area I'm walking right now was basically underwater. Could you walk through it? Yeah, it wasn't. Maybe it was an inch or inch and a half of water. The deepest part but if you have nice shoes on or the girls have you know high heels basically everybody is walking and tiptoeing around the edges here where it appears to be a little bit higher ground and so you can stay keep your keep your feet dry but i didn't realize that that was a common occurrence i have a research just to see how common it actually is but you can see again get a flavor you've got more of these little cafe type things and there's a there's a uh, little orchestra, if you will, or, or band set up, and they're all playing. I believe they do have, they set up, you know, concerts in this in this square. You can get a feel for how, how large it is. When you get down this end, you've got, you have less people, a little bit, less congestion. So I hope you get a, a flavor for this. I will say it's impressive. The architecture's impressive. I'm, uh... Really glad that I was able to experience this. And more importantly, I was glad that we were able to have, uh, you know, our, our daughters experience this at their age. And of course, you know, they're posting all their stuff and TikToks and uploads to their friends. And so it's been, uh, it's been a, a great, obviously, first and foremost, family experience. Great time to spend with family just out of the riffraff of the, of the business and the daily routine. And that is, we talk about this on, talk about that concept on this channel all the time. That is priceless, okay? You've got to take some time to spend it with family. Yes, we're always thinking, uh, you know, preparedness. We're always looking at, you know, news events, what's happening. I know there's a lot happening. Oh, and by the way, uh, this is not a AI voice recording of me. It's actually me. <laughs> you guys are following this uh, stuff with Biden and, there was some serious inquiries about where he is and what's going on. In the last half an hour, I checked news and I did not uh, see these made any any uh, personal appearance yet. So just so you guys know, uh, uh, this uh, this is me behind the camera. There's the square.
I'll get used to this thing. It rotates on its own. It's got some kind of it's as an app I download on the iPhone, and it's supposed to follow everything and auto focus. And I don't know. It's not it's not some major piece of equipment, but I thought it would be good to kind of eventually give you guys this walk around. And I will tell you, Paris didn't really lend itself to this. It, it was a we Ubered everywhere in Paris. Uh, we obviously went from you know from let's say site to site or experience to experience the Louvre and did um, you know did the Arc de Triomphe, did the Eiffel Tower. I uploaded some shorts about those things, but it's a little doesn't lend itself to this kind of walk around per se. And frankly, Paris was just miles and miles of sidewalks lined with cafes and thousands of people just sitting in these cafes on the sidewalks yes it's charming but i will say you know once you've spent a couple days there and kind of taken that in and seen it uh you, you've kind of done that that was that's just my personal experience let's talk about transportation here um obviously this is on an island it's a uh, it's a, a man-made island and so you can only get out here by water taxi from the airport. So when we landed, uh, we had a very short taxi ride to a water taxi. And then the water taxi took us um, to basically right to our hotel. And then you unload bags off the water taxi. And then what dirt, when you're here, if you want to go see some other islands, which are small islands around here, uh, there's Murano. You guys heard of Murano Glass. There's I don't know Burano, B-U-R-A-N-L. We did both of those. Toured the Murano Glass factory. That was pretty pretty impressive. Met one of the owners of the family, and had a tour to see how that was made. But uh, anyway, uh, going back to the transportation, we we went to Murano. We had a, a boat from the hotel. A water taxi set it up for us, and then we took a water taxi from Murano to Burano. And then from Burano that evening when we were coming home, actually Dennis Quaid was on Burano with his family. He walked in the same restaurant we were sitting at in Burano. And at home that night, we didn't have a water taxi home. And I made the decision to go try the public public transportation, which would be akin to our bus, our public system bus, or, you know, in the United States. And it was about as much of a nightmare as I as I envision the public transit system being across the United States in terms of it was not very expensive to get tickets. And then we waited basically for about 45 minutes to catch the boat. And then the boat had about five stops before we were able to get back to our stop at, at uh, San Marcos Square was the drop off. It was body to body, very, very uh, hot and humid. No air conditioning in the public transit boat. And by the time we got back, by the time we got the tickets, waited, took the boat back to our hotel, it was probably two hours. So I kind of made a decision in the last couple of days to just do water taxis. And I will tell you that uh, the cost is substantially more. Water taxi picks us up right at our airport, I mean airport, right at our hotel. We walk out from our hotel and we jump in the water taxi and go wherever we want. We're there in 10, 15 minutes. Yesterday we went to Lido Island, another little island where we had that beach on the Adriatic Sea. Spent the whole day there, took a water taxi over there and then, and then called and had one come pick us up to go to come back home. And uh, it was, let's say, the difference in cost. The water taxi was $100 each way. The public transportation, I believe, was $7 per ticket. So. Seven times four was under thirty dollars to take the public transportation, and it was well, that would have been each way so sixty versus about two hundred, hundred dollars each way to take the private water taxi. But just time and enjoyment factor and all those things that come along with the experience, I just decided that I did not. I was exhausted after that two-hour jaunt, it's body to body, getting across back across the uh, waterway to our hotel that day from Burano, B-U-R-A-N-O Island. So this is just, you guys get a feel for a lot of bridges here like this. You see, they have, obviously have to get over all these canals. So they have all these bridges uh, that you basically 
have to cross and you're gonna you can see down there and there's the gondola rides that people take and everyone stands on these bridges and films you can get a feel for how narrow it is but you can also get a feel for how many people you know there are that just line these canals Yeah, what I was saying is that uh, the gondola, the guys that uh, paddle or row the gondolas, do not sing, if you've noticed that. Uh, we were talking to our gondola guy the other day, and he said that is a, that's a movie creation. So it's something that they do in Vegas. If you guys have ever been to uh, the, uh, I guess it's the Paris and the Venetian in Las Vegas, the gondola guys all sing. Uh, they don't do that here. The guy was laughing at us the other day when we said, uh, you know, why aren't you going to sing for us? He thought we were like crazy. So that is kind of what I was explaining are all these bridges that you have to traverse to get over these canals. Again, lots of people today you can see, you get a feel for these long, narrow alleyways, if you will, that is basically very, very characteristic of what you see. Obviously everybody's taking pictures on the bridges, everyone's taking selfies. I'm going to try to find, if I can, I'm just going to keep walking with you guys for a while and try to find the uh, Rialto Bridge, if I can. A lot of times it's marked, and we'll see where this goes. I think I posted a short from the Rialto Bridge the other day, but I kind of thought if I could get down there and walk to it. I don't think, well, let me go this way. I think I might, I might be in the right path here. Again, you guys will get a flavor for the amount of people here. So, transportation again, public water taxis or private water taxis. When you're not traversing from island to island, the public transportation appears to be a little bit more of a simple situation. It's when you're crossing, I think, from island to island that it becomes a little more of a hassle because you have one or two boats that are taking many, many stops. And it just is a process. So I think, guys, if you're here, and you're just going from different stops, if you will, right around Venice proper and not going out to Murano or Burano. There's another third island as well we did not get to. If you're not doing that, I think that it's probably fine if you don't mind being with a bunch of people, you're definitely going to save save some money doing it that way. I'm just going to keep walking here. I'm not great at the directions. You get turned around here in these alleys and all these little narrow areas. So I'm just going to keep making my way so I can get you guys over towards this Rialto Bridge, which is kind of a famous bridge. You can see kind of how they do the restaurants here. Everything is kind of a lot of restaurants lined up. I will tell you this, in this Obviously, it's obviously it's a tourista zone, and so you know the menus. You know you, you've got everything on the menus, right? They serve. I'll tell you what's popular. Popular, obviously, is the pasta dishes. The pasta dishes here. You know you, you do get that. I'm not a big pasta eater, so I've tried some of it. I've enjoyed some of it. Gnocchi, the penne's, the pastas, uh, the the squid ink. I believe it is pasta. Is very very. It's, it's, it's jet black. It's very popular. They, the, another thing that's very popular is the sea bass. So let me tell you a story. Last night, and I've been having steak uh, most of the nights just because it's kind of my, my food of choice. But I did last night decide to take the plunge and get a uh, sea bass. So it says filet of sea bass. So I thought, okay, no big deal. Well, I ordered the sea bass and... They show up to the table with, a, with an entire uh, fish on the plate, head and all, everything there. I think the guy saw my reaction, kind of like, what am I going to do with this? 
and you kind of smile and say, "Would you like me to, to you know, would you like us to, you know, debone, debone the uh, uh, the uh, sea bass?" I said, "Yes, would you please do that? I would appreciate that." So they took it back and then they brought it back to the table, uh, deboned, if you will, but the whole fish is laying out, you know. So it's a different different style. Actually, it was extremely good. Put some lemon on it. It was they drizzled a little bit of olive oil, uh, and it was extremely good. But still, a little bit of work. You know, just get a perfectly shaped piece of fish on your plate, like you do at most places, you know, in the states at a fish house or something. A lot of pizzerias, as you can imagine. Pizzerias, big deal. Let me see where I'm going here. Normally stuff is, is marked. So you can... I want to get you guys down by the canal's edge, by the water. I'm just going to keep walking and talking. Let me. So I discussed the transportation. I discussed uh, the, the food, basically. But, oh, anyway, when you go to these tourist spots like this, they have everything on the menu. I mean, you can get steak. You can get... Pizza, you can get, I mean, everything. And somebody was commenting, it was a local, saying, well, that's a sign of the tourists, you know, because let me show you this little, this little. You'll be walking and you'll just come across things like this, you know. But again, they were, uh, I was reading, watching some guy on YouTube who I follow, and he was saying that that's obviously a sign of a, of a, of a tourist establishment because, they are, the menu has everything in the world on it, right? They're not just serving pasta or fish. And look, I think you'd have to go outside of the, if you will, the, the, the tourist proper area here, the main downtown part of Venice, if you will, to probably get just more authentic food. And yeah, you're getting authentic food here, just not getting uh, specialization on stuff, really because they're trying to cater to as many families as, as, as they can. Oh, by the way, you'll be walking down these streets like this and guys will come out of the restaurant, proprietors will come out and they'll try to get you to come to their restaurant. And they'll say, oh, come on, come on, I have a table, air conditioning, it's cool. And we'll get you some, we'll get you some Prosecco, please come in. And so they try to kind of bid for you to sit down at, <laughs> at their, their, their restaurant and eat. Last night we were walking down and, you know, we probably had four or five restaurants out yelling at us to try to, sit down and it's a little it's not intimidating it's just a little annoying because you know you just kind of want to have just some peace and quiet but or just i should say just kind of be left alone but it is what it is yeah it's just part of being here and soaking it all in the shopping uh massive high-end shopping here chanel gucci louis vuitton all that stuff you see everywhere it's, uh, it's it's like you go from shopping district to shopping district all the high-end uh, watch stores you know they have Rolex they have AP they have Omega they have Cartier all that stuff's here as well so I mean I guess if you're looking to shop I had not not inquired to buy a gold chain but they have that here I asked my gold uh, contact friend of mine um, Braden over in California, I texted him, hey, what, what's going on with this? Is it cheaper to buy, you know, 18 karat yellow, Italian yellow gold here than it is to buy it at home? And he said, well, you, there's a 6%, I guess a 6%. Here we have a, uh, this is why we didn't want to take a gondola ride during the day, the other day. Look at this, guys. You've got a traffic jam of gondolas here. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they maneuver through that one. So this is the issue, right? So it's got to be cruise ship sitting uh, uh, you know on on shore for a while or something but anyway I, that that just that's not not my style we got lucky the other night with our gondola ride it was very peaceful it was the perfect time of day but i will say this the sun's not directly out today we have a little bit of a, a overcast here which makes it much nicer in terms of the experience the other day and we took the tour of the basilica and the Doge Palace, it was the warmest day it's been since we've been here, it's about 91 degrees, and you get inside those thick concrete buildings, there's no air conditioning, and boy, it, it is, uh, it's challenging, I'll tell you that, it's challenging. So 
So, what do you guys? I was going to go on to the economy as I always do revert to that, but I think I'll do a separate show later from the rooftop at the hotel where I can just focus on some things, bring out the laptop, and share with you guys kind of some current events and, and what's what's happening. Obviously, the Biden thing is it's a little unsettling, obviously, for me. I say obviously, but it's a little bit unsettling being out of the country when this is happening because, look, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of being, questions being asked. You know, why has uh, Joe Biden not made any public appearance since... I guess it was uh, many, many, many days ago when they saw him getting off Air Force One. And he looked pretty shaky getting into a car. And then evidently a couple days later, he tendered this withdrawal from the race that was not on a presidential, official presidential stationery. And some people were calling into question the authenticity of the signature on that letter and whether it's something more. Uh, whether meaning whether or not number one does he even know what was done and number two uh, and, and I guess even more importantly well number two is 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 he alive we know according to his doctors he had COVID uh, and number three if he is unable to and probably most importantly if he's unable to uh, continue in the race then how is he able to continue as you know president of the United States reportedly someone who still is the commander in chief and has control of the nuclear arsenal among other things and of course the entire military as well so that's a little quieter over here you can kind of see in some of these back areas a lot of people walking around, and I'm completely lost, so I don't know where I'm at. I'm just kind of cruising and talking about some things. I want to cover some topics with you guys. So I covered transportation, uh, discussed the food a little bit. Again, it's fish-based and pasta-based. A lot of fish selections if you guys like fish. So my experience yesterday was, like I said, with the exception of the whole fish coming out, it was high quality and tasted great. My, uh, my kids are enjoying the, the pasta. Someone asked me in a comment, um, what is the reception to the tourists here? Or, or not, that wasn't the comment. The question was, you know, have I had any interaction with locals to get their take on what's happening with the United States? And the answer to that is no, I have not. Other than servers here, there seems to be a pretty substantial language barrier. Uh, I just, again, have not personally experienced a lot of um, English, English speakers outside of the folks that have been you know, helping to serve us and, and, and obviously at the hotel and in the restaurants. And of course, they need to be versed in, in that. So, or in obviously speak English to communicate. So I have not had that interaction. But in terms of my perception of how the locals receive the tourists i will say this i haven't had any let's say negative experience any aggression i was reading an article to this morning that in other areas around this this not this country but around the world especially in, in, in especially in spain i was reading and in greece and other countries uh, they are the locals are lashing out at the tourists I read in Spain when they bring these tour boats in or these uh, cruise ships. Not, I'm not saying all Spain, but there were certain ports where the locals were actually dousing the tourists with water guns when they came ashore. And there's protests going on and all that. And I, I can understand why. It's, I mean, it's obviously an, it's an invasion, if you will, of their space. 
and their peace and quiet. Sir, I get to the Rialto Bridge. This way. Keep going that way? No. Okay, thank you. So he spoke English, but talked to locals and we asked some questions like we were trying to get, figure out that public transportation. The other day, we thought we were on the wrong, in the wrong line for the wrong boat, going to the wrong drop off. So we tried to ask a bunch of people and everyone just looked at us like we were a bit nuts, didn't understand us, so that was why. But back to this, this situation with the tourists and the reception, I've had no problem with that. But I'm sure that all these countries are, look, countries are looking and all these people around the world are looking at the United States and saying, what a banana republic, right? I mean, obviously, look, I'm not knocking the United States. It's a country I love, country I was born in. I'll never leave the United States. Obviously, the freedoms that we have still surpass a lot of the freedoms that you do not enjoy, let's say, in other parts of the world, okay? So I'm not saying, I'm just saying that others are obviously looking in, or I would imagine looking in and shaking their heads as to what they perceive to be unfolding in the United States. And look, at I, I, I'm shaking my head. I am astonished about how this has unfolded. I saw an article last night. I know I'm jumping around a bit, guys. I'm just walking and talking, trying to figure out where the heck I am, but it gives you the flavor for what's happening in front of me and where I'm at, which I wanted to convey anyway. But let me finish this thought. You know, I saw an article last night that they're saying this thing with Biden could even be setting up uh, a 25th Amendment issue, you know, a 25th Amendment battle. I won't go into the details of that. Look it up. But it's uh, very, very interesting and thought-provoking. So what I was going back to again, it's a little bit unsettling, I guess, being out of the country when this is actually happening. You would hope, I don't like the word hope, but I guess uh, fingers crossed that everything stays on the rails for another uh, seven or eight days till we get back stateside. I mean, okay, look at, I mean, I wouldn't say it's, you have to, you have to live life and you can't obviously control everything that's going to happen. But for someone like me who kind of prides myself on ostensibly staying in control and that's kind of a neat little <laughs> patio here. Uh, but you know, again, staying in control, it's a little bit, mm, what's the right word? Makes you feel a bit vulnerable. I think that's the right word, vulnerable. For me, being around a lot of people, not having... Uh, my security per se, as you all know what I'm referring to, that has a certain level of vulnerability, not just from my personal uh, standpoint, but obviously from my perspective of, you know, the family, right? And we, we, and we knew that. We understood, you know, that, that was what was going on with you coming into these countries. And that's, like I said, it's an unbelievable experience. So, I think I'm kind of getting far a path here. We're going to keep working here. You guys can see the, the back areas. And maybe I'll funnel my way into the Rialto Bridge is what I want to show you guys. So what else did I want to cover? I had some notes. I want to cover the food. I want to cover the people. Everyone's very friendly, though. I will say that. There's been nobody... Um, rude or untoward in any way. So from that perspective, I would say that there appears to be a level of patience that you may not <laughs> may not get res uh, reciprocated uh, in the United States. Again, I, I don't I don't know. I can't say one way or the other.
I'm going to, my daughter tells me that you can splice these videos together and create one video. So I'm going to create one long video with this walk around. And you guys can watch what you want of it. And uh, flip, skip through what you, what you don't want. But this is, this is, you know, the back, back streets, I guess here, if you will. Hmm, I may have stumbled upon an entry point for a boat. So let's see what's going on down here. It says San, San Zacaria, San Zacaria. Well, let's see what this is all about. We have people dragging luggage, so. What else can I, can I share with you about it? Talked about the weather. It's been between the mid 80s and low 90s. Humidity's mid 60%. Maybe a little bit more than that on certain days. It's been high as I think 75%. I'm back to this main walkway here. So we're gonna just gonna kind of go with this. This is down from San Marcos Square. I think I mentioned the boats line up here. Again, you guys can see how many people there are. It's no joke. That's the loading area for their public transportation. That's looking back towards the that, that uh, cathedral right there is right at the uh, Piazza Square where I walked from. But again, here I get all turned around. I've been, you actually put in your little map quest and put walking, it'll direct you, believe it or not, down these little back alleyways and to where you want to go. A lot of times in the late evenings, my girls and my wife are late nighters. I'm just really not, so I kind of just peel out early usually so i go back to the room not too early i'm not a total party pooper but i'm used to guys i get up at normal time normal hours for me as i get up at five let me go back down this way i get up at 5 30 in the morning a.m usually is my is my time i wake up and i normally go to bed at night about 9 30 9 9 30 10 o'clock is kind of late night for me during the during the work week for sure and so this has been i will say this the first few days we were we got over to paris i could not i couldn't get any sleep i just was all screwed up it wasn't necessarily jet lag per se it was just i could not i was waking up in the middle of the night and then laying there wide awake being nine hours ahead it took about Took about four days, I think, for me till I actually got a decent night's sleep. Now I'm on this kind of a regimen now, but again, it's it's odd because when I get up here in the morning, you know, everyone stateside United States is just still finishing dinner and uh, getting ready to go to bed. So it's 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 a bit trippy. Again, this is the I don't know if I want to call it the seaboard, but Maybe that's an appropriate characterization as we walk back towards the Piazza Square. Yeah, people having, sitting in cafes. It's warm out here. You sit outside and you get sun coming down directly. You have umbrellas, but it's not real comfortable. Last night was a lot more of a comfortable night. Today's a little warm again. You can see they're doing construction. Let me see if I can raise this up. Sorry, wrong way. So they're doing some construction.
You're in all, you hear all languages, obviously. All the languages. What I might do here, rather than go back over the same territory, is stop the video and I will have my daughter help me splice the videos together so I can. Well, let's go down here, see what's going on down here. I was going to say, have her help me slice the, splice the videos together so that I can. Get you guys over to the Rialto Bridge, looking down the main canal there. Maybe we'll stumble on it. It's a lot cooler. Yeah, you don't get a lot of airflow in these little alleyways or streets. But it is cooler because you're not in the direct sunlight. Oh, we already came through here. All right, so I'm going in circle. So I'm going to stop the, uh, stop the video. And what I'll do is get over to the Rialto Bridge and then check back in, share a few more thoughts, and then we'll call it good. Thanks, guys. Talk to you in a little bit. Bye. Hey, guys. I'm back. Um, I had to figure out um, where I was going to get you guys back over to uh, the Rialto Bridge. So we're filming again, back on the move. I'll just splice the videos together. But as you can see, it's still extremely busy uh, down here. Uh, as we traverse a little bit more of a commercial, let's say, shopping area here. The street's a bit wider. Uh, before I get up to the Rialto Bridge, just want to touch base. It's really early, 6 a.m., I believe, on the West Coast right now in the United States. So I've been monitoring news uh, coming out. What I just see is two top stories. One is the director of the Secret Service, after getting her butt kicked, uh, if you watched any of the testimony from the the hearings yesterday, congressional hearings, uh, she has, uh, without surprise, resigned today, uh, and she should be ashamed, and she should have resigned after that performance. She couldn't answer any questions. She's the director of the Secret Service, and she didn't come to her national hearing prepared. Well, she should have, but you got to believe that was intentional because they're hiding information probably. But that's for another another story. Uh, she resigned today. Next story I just saw is existing home sales. The United States have cratered, fell 5.4% uh, greater than expected. That is the fourth monthly decline of uh existing home sales. I believe the article from Zero Hedge said it's the worst decline since November of 2022. So guys, uh, I hope that everyone's paying attention to what's happening with the housing market. It is uh, it is in the downward trend here and uh, we're going to have to keep watch on this. You, we all know where it's heading in the medium term long term hope you guys are going to try to position yourselves if you can if you're if you're if you're of that mindset maybe step in and acquire some properties uh i'm reading a book right now which i'll share the title uh, with you i'm gonna do a whole separate video on that about the uh the great depression and it's shared through the eyes of a solo practitioner attorney uh, well, it's his son, actually, that shared his father's uh, diary, and they published it, and his dad had lived through the Great Depression, and he was publishing, or he wrote in his diary almost daily what was unfolding and how it was unfolding uh, during the Great Depression, uh, starting in the, uh, I think his early entry was like 1931, and he had entries for 10 years, okay? And it's amazing to see the similarities between what was happening then and what is happening now, I'm telling you guys. And then when the, mar the stock market started to collapse, everybody was buying the dip. All their buddies were saying it's the lowest it's ever going to be, buy, buy, buy. And guess what? It kept dropping. The market, the stock market kept dropping. The housing market kept dropping. Uh, tax sales were increasing. Foreclosures were increasing. And a lot of people lost huge fortunes because they thought that buying the dip was the right strategy. And so I'm going to complete reading this book and I'm going to share it with you, do a review. So far, it 
is excellent, okay? I don't have the book in front of me, so I don't want to misstate the, the exact title. I'm just walking up the steps here towards the Rialto Bridge. Uh, this is uh, very uh, popular, as you can see. A uh, place for tourists to flock to. Too many people for me, but I wanted to get you guys up here and see it. I think I did a short from here, uh, which I posted a few days ago. But uh, I wanted to show it to you, kind of, kind of not live, but as I'm walking through this here, so you can see what it is. So we go to the left here, I think, to get to the canal side. And then we, what this is, is this Rialto Bridge is basically at the Grand Canal. So you can get a flavor for it and all the boats come through here. When we were coming in on our water taxi from the airport, there's an advantage to being tall. As we're coming in on our water taxi from the airport, um, this is what we were looking up at. and People were looking over the bridge down and taking pictures and videos and just figured this out screen up someone's there we go looking down at the grand canal guys from the perspective of the rialto bridge i love you guys the other night i did a video from down at the, at the edge of the canal we were having deer down there. I think it was the video I did for like a, about, I don't know, a minute and a half. I was standing up. My daughter was filming, actually. I was, I was saying that Brian had just uh, withdrawn from the race. We were actually eating at that restaurant down there. And I did that video from right there at the corner of that little dock. And we were eating at that restaurante. Cafe Saraceno, I guess, or Saraceno, I guess it is. We sat there right at a table at the edge of the water. And it's interesting, as the night went on, we were there for a couple hours, and as the, as the water started to rise, it was actually coming onto the patio there under our feet. And uh, the, the, my, uh, my, my wife and, and my, my daughters were saying how their feet were getting wet. So that was towards the end of the meal anyway. We had a great time. It was a wonderful uh, meal, and it was kind of cool. But I think I was discussing earlier how when this water starts to rise, it does it floods. Sorry about my finger there. It floods the uh, these areas. So there we go. There is the Grand Canal, guys, at 10 minutes to 6 in the evening on July 23rd from Venice, Italy. And when I look behind me, you can see how many people are flooding up this bridge to try to get a view here. It's just insane. All right, I'll see if I can fight my way through the uh, through the crowd here. Keep giving you guys a little flavor of not only the beautiful parts, but the congested parts here, so you can get a concept of how many folks are around here. No, screw up any family photos. Let me walk down this way. I'll get you guys down to the water's edge here. We'll walk right by that restaurant so you can see it. It just goes to the end and where the uh, little boats drop. In fact, I'll take you down to where our gondola dropped us the other day. It's constant oncoming traffic here.
we're already sitting out having uh, having dinner. And I guess it is almost dinner time. People seem to eat here every hour of the day. Restaurants are open late. They serve food late. They, like I said, they all try to kind of get you into the restaurants, at least in the evening. There's a view of the canal from looking back up towards the bridge there. But again, you saw earlier, there are areas, guys, where it's graffitied, you know, when you're just off of the, the main commercial, let's say, walking area, if you get back in some of those smaller streets, and I call them alleyways, but they're streets, you know, you, you have a lot of graffiti. Um, and it doesn't look that great. You got some things boarded up. So it's, you know, I guess in some respects, it's kind of like you know, any city. You get into the main tourist zone and they keep it looking real nice. And you get back off a couple blocks off the main street and uh, you get a little bit more of the, maybe the reality, I don't know, of the situation. I don't have my finger on the pulse out here, although I have been reading and hearing that's really low crime just because you are on an island. So you start perpetrating a bunch of crime, where are you going to go? So here is where we are. Gondola let us off the other night after we were done. There's this really cool little restaurant right here I saw. I thought it would be kind of neat to try. But again, this stuff is you know, in the main zone. And they get you on the prices, guys, down here. I mean, they nail you. I would say certain things aren't, aren't, I said, you know, it's, it's interesting. You go to a steakhouse, I go to a steakhouse in my area, you know, when we go, it's, it's not inexpensive. I'll tell you that. So I don't want to misstate or, or inflate or, or misrepresent. I guess what I should say is when you get off the main zone here and out of these main canal side restaurants, the ones I just showed you a little while ago that are up in the, San Marco Square area, when you get a little bit, you know, a couple of rows or blocks away, obviously the prices are much less. But even here, it's probably not incomparable. I mean, you know, you can get a, a nice steak for 30 euros here, which is what about 40, 35, maybe, maybe 35, 38 US dollars. And look, you go into a good steakhouse these days. You can't get a good steak for under $55, right? So maybe in that respect, comparably, it's competitive. I say competitive, it's, it's less. I don't know. I haven't done a full devaluation, but certain areas, the drinks are more like at our hotel. Let's say uh, an Aperol Spritz is 16 euros, whereas if you go down to some of the less touristy areas here, they're about six euros yesterday at our little beach club we went to during the day over at lido island they were four and a half euros so you could get four spritzes at lido island in venice for the same price as you can get one at the hotel we're staying at just to give you an idea so it all it, 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 it all depends on where you're at and what your vantage point is i guess i know i'm rambling a bit now I'm not going to backtrack everything we already covered. You guys get an idea for what's going on here. This is the Rialto Bridge. Again, I filmed this video the other night from right here. And uh, that's the Rialto Bridge. So you guys can get a feel for looking at it now from the other vantage point and everybody going through it uh, on the Grand Canal here. So, all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the, the walk around. That was probably 
I don't know why I put them all together. It might be an hour or something, but it gives you guys a flavor. Good, bad, the ugly, my thoughts. Taking off tomorrow, we're catching a train, two and a half hour train ride uh, into Florence. So we're going to be in Florence for, I think, three nights before we head out to Rome and finish up the trip. So again, I'll be playing out what happens the rest of the day today which is almost the end of my day here, beginning of your day in the United States. If there's any more substantial news that gets that hits the uh, the wires, I'll, I'll jump on and do a regular video post to discuss it. But what I saw this morning so far, morning, your time, uh, existing home sales are dropping, 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 and they're going to continue to drop, I believe. And director of the Secret Service uh, has uh, resigned... Thank goodness, evidently they had rejected her department, her agency had rejected several requests by the Trump team for additional security. And they tried to ask her that yesterday during the congressional hearings and uh, she flubbed it, said she didn't have the information and tried to tried to, to duck and weave it. Didn't work out, so she's done. All right, accountability means something. I um, appreciate all you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Please make sure you're still subscribed. We're dropping subs. Maybe people are upset that I'm over here in Europe and not walking the walk, as everybody says, for a couple of weeks here. But again, got a got a got a balanced life. You only get to live once. So, again, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I will touch base soon. Okay, bye.